What's up guys, it's your boy Justin with another fantasy film review. Today we're reviewing 1983's Deathstalker, which is an hour and 20 minutes. Uh, it's directed by James Sabardellati, starring Rick Hill as Deathstalker, Richard Broker as Ogress, who you'll... Well, you never saw his face, but he was Jason Voorhees in uh, Friday, Friday uh, 13th Part 3. Barbie Benton as Princess Codile, Lana Clarkson as Kyra, and Bernard Arcard as Munkar. So, you might, it, you might have heard of this film. Um, James from Cinemassacre uh, did a review of it, and also Rather Media... T talked about this film in one of their best of the wor worst uh, videos. So this movie was produced uh, by Roger Corman and this film was shot in Argentina with an Italian director who went by an American sounding name because this was uh, you know Roger Corman and the Italian like you know uh, cinema franchise uh, cinema filmmakers uh, w would make movies that look like big budget films but really were like you know trashy like <laughs> tra low budget trashy films right uh, but like that that poster though the posters for this movie were be for the for this uh, series of film were beautiful and uh, people equate this f this franchise as the fantasy James Bond <laughs> films because like it, in almost every movie they would they would uh they would have a different actor play Deathstalker except for the fourth film when they brought back Rick Hill. So this movie obviously aesthetically was inspired by the Conan the Barbarian films with Arnold Schwarzenegger and uh the movie starts off uh with a guy who with a a guy who kidnapped like a ch a chick and like you know looted a bunch of gold. He gets chased. He gets chased by like a bunch of orcs or w some kind of monster men, right? Uh, w one of which you know stays behind to grape the girl. Lots of grape, <laughs> grape in this movie. <laughs> Very grapey this film is. <laughs> Right, and you know, and Death Stalker happens to be around, um, and he kills not only the the thief but also the barbarian, the barbarian monsters, and try tr tries to grape the girl himself, but gets interrupted by a messenger of the king, which he gets um, taken to this like ho hobo king. In his like camping ground, right where he's like promised golds and riches if he goes and kill the evil sorcerer who stole his kingdom, right? Who is called Munkar, and he has taken his daughter. And you know, Deathstalker is kind of an anti-hero, right? He t he tells him, ah, "I'm a warrior. I kill and steal to survive," right? Uh, I ain't no hero. He heroes and fools are the same. And then immediately, go next scene, go goes to meet this like witch who tells him how tells him of the three magic items in this world that makes people invincible. Right? One's the chalice, one's uh, amulet, and then there's the sword. Right? And she knows where to get the sword. And turns out Monkar has the chalice. And the um, ambulant, and you know, is spying on Deathstalker to like you know, so he can get the sword, so he can get the ultimate power, right? So Deathstalker goes on this quest for the sword, meet, meets this monster man in a cave. The monster man turns out to be a man and gives him the sword. Where like you know, uh, Deathstalker fights an ogre, right? Uh, he, he saves the monster man. He turns into this 50 year old man <laughs> who's like the sidekick of Deathstalker. And they go they go on a quest uh, on his journey to Monkar's castle where they meet um, 
muscle bound Mark Hamill, played by Richard Broker, who's Ogress in the film. And they meet a warrior woman named uh, Kyra, played by uh, Lana Clarkson, who is just warrior woman who just has her tits out. <laughs> Right, throughout the film. Except for when they go to Monkar's castle and they attend the party, she has like the, these nipple guards. <laughs> but yeah, like uh, when they when Deathstalker meets Ogress, he gets told that, you know, Monkar has this... Uh, tr Monkar, who's supposed to be this immortal sorcerer, uh, is ho holding a, tor a tournament... Where he's going to grant the winner, uh, make the winner of the tournament his, his heir, right? To inherit his castle, right? And uh, there's a great scene where there's like a party at, <laughs> at, the, at the castle. And it's just everybody's having at it with, uh, his, with Monkar's harem, right? <laughs> And people are getting drunken ball, drunken, uh, <laughs> drunken ball brawling. There's mud. There's sexy mud wrestling, <laughs> right? The, oh man. So yeah. The, then the the film turns into a fantasy film version of Bloodsport, where you see one on one fights, right, with really shitty gore. Really shit, like really sh shitty blood effects. There is like maybe one or two gore effects in the film that actually look decent near the end, right? Um, yeah. So like, it turns out that the tournament is actually bullshit, and that it's a trap by Monkar to kill all the powerful warriors in the ki in the kingdom, right? And he tries to uh, send. Uh, sent his guard to kill Deathstalker, right? By turning him into Princess Cadil, right? And giving him a dagger. <laughs> Which, you know, Deathstalker disarms her and then tries to grape her, but then feels like there's something going on here with the, this Princess Cadil. So he, he lets her leave. <laughs> and then, like, uh, she turns into... She gets, um, you know, caught by Kyra and turns back into a man, and they have this duel to the death where they kill each other, right? So there goes one of the main characters, like uh, one one of the main characters' uh, friends. Then it turns out that Ogris was a traitor, and the Deathstalker has a fight with him, right? And and then it leads to the like the second. Last fight in the film where Deathstalker fights the orc that was at the party, right? And there's a funny scene at the party where the or orc uh, at the sees like you know a roasted pig's head and then eats the pig's, head. <laughs> right? At first he's like, "Well, what the fuck is this?" And then he just eats it, <laughs> fucking camels. And like uh, I thought the fucking the the fucking orc in this film. Had a cooler sword than like Deathstalker. He's just like this very blocky great sword. Well, well, it has a blocky guard, but it look like it's a pretty cool looking great sword. It's very berserk esque, right? Which is way better than the our hero's fucking magic sword, which looks like shit. Honestly, it's like one of the weakest looking magic swords I ever seen in fantasy films. But yet, <laughs> because of bad writing. Uh, it's actually the most powerful because, like, it's supposed to be like this sword that the sword grants its user like invulnerability. So there's a when the final fight with uh, Monkar happens, you know, M Monkar uses illusion magic um, to make like you know Deathstalker think he's getting hurt. And he does he even does like the Shadow Clone Tutsu, where there's multiple Monkars, which is just which was just guys in makeup and black hoods, <laughs> right, Rome? Uh, but yeah, like it turns, but yeah, so like Death Stalker beats Monkar and doesn't kill him and gives him 
uh, doesn't kill him, only for Munkar to be captured by the townspeople and then uh, tied up to two horses, horses and then <laughs> fucking torn up, gets torn apart. And that's where you see one of the cooler gore effects in the film. Actually, it's the coolest. Actually. And what I thought was cool, that Deathstalker basically like, D these fucking magic items are bullshit and don't belong in this world. So he just destroys them, right? With the magic sword. And killing the magic sword himself. And the movie ends. So what do I think about this movie? Um, it's sleazy as fuck. Uh, there's bad fights in the film. There's like a scene early on in the film where like Deathstalker's on a horse and he's fighting another guy in a horse but their swords never touch and every time like their swords about to touch the camera pans down to the horse's leg and you hear a clang clang sound right as if the the swords are are fucking uh, touching right oh my god uh, bad gore effects um, but yeah um, bad gore effects the fights suck the stunts suck uh, what, what cool shit there is in the film. Uh, I thought Monkar, the villain, was kind of cool. He could have been written better, but he was kind of cool. He had this, like, he has this monster that lives inside this treasure chest that he feeds, like, bits of pieces off, like, one of his prisoners, which I thought, oh, that's, you know, that's, that's cool. They actually tried in this film, right? There is a variety of monsters in this low-budget, cheap fantasy film. You had like an ogre. You had whatever the fuck those guys were in the beginning of the film. You had the the guy who was living in the cave as a monster was cursed by Munkar, and obviously you had the 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 chest monster, which I think is that was that supposed to be a mimic? I don't fucking know. Which if people don't know what the mimic is, mimic is like a Dungeons and Dragons monster that was that's also in Final Fantasy and I think even Dragon Quest, which is yeah it is in Dragon Quest, which is like a tre tre which looks like a treasure chest, but when you open up, it's actually like a monster that tries to eat you. <laughs> so it's like was that was that treasure chest monster in the film supposed to be? A mimic, like an actual Dungeons and Dragons monster. If so, that was that's actually pretty cool. But uh, yeah, this movie is just schlock. But it's fun schlock. I kind of like the snide remarks, of uh, the 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 snide remarks the characters make uh, in the film, right? I f like you know, there, there's some like witty like banter in the film, right? Especially Deathstalker. Deathstalker, I think is a pretty cool protagonist for a fantasy film. It's just that, you know, he's just... It's just that he's cool, but everything around him is garbage. <laughs> and his he is the weakest-looking, shittiest magic sword ever. Like, this movie, in a way, makes fucking the sword and the sorcerer look like a fucking... The sword and the sorcerer and fucking... Um, Hawk the Slayer looked like a masterpiece, but this movie is probably funner than those other films, right? And th and this movie has lots of gratuitous <laughs> fucking nudity. It's the thing where this movie, as a fantasy film, sucks, but as like a fun, schlocky film, it's great. You know what I mean? So, oy vey, what do I rate this fucking film? Oh, it's the thing where it's like, as a fantasy film, this is like a 4 out of 10. But as like a fun, schlocky film, you know, it's like a 6 out of 10. This is a movie that, where it does have rewatchability, right? Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll give it like a 5 out of 10. We'll meet a bit, um, you know. We'll meet it like, you know, you know halfway. So I was going to review, um, what was it called, the fucking piece of shit? I don't know. <laughs> I forget the name, but it's like by the same fucking, like, you know, production fan uh, company. So fuck that. Um, our next fantasy film review is going to be uh, probably animated. So that's it. Peace.